Uh, we're joined by CBS News foreign correspondent Imtiaz Tayeb. Uh, he joins us from Tel Aviv. Imtiaz, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. You've been monitoring the situation in Israel over the past week. What are you experiencing on the ground there today? Tom, good to talk to you. Yeah, it's been another intense day for a lot of reasons. Let's start with Gaza. Of course, Israel's bombardment of the Gaza Strip, extremely intense, uh, causing untold destruction. Attempts to get aid into Gaza, which Israel did allow, stopped because uh, of rockets from various Palestinian factions inside of Gaza, uh, essentially landed near to where this aid was due to go in. So that didn't happen. On this side of the border, uh, we had that uh, that incident which uh, Ian Lee mentioned in which uh, a processing plant uh, essentially was struck by a Hamas rocket. Uh, we know two Thai workers were killed, 10 were injured. Uh, so all of this really just sort of underscores how this very kinetic conflict is still ongoing. But if you widen the lens even further across the occupied West Bank and parts of East Jerusalem, there's been extraordinary protests and violence which has really just swept the Palestinian street. And all of this really just uh, presents what is a very volatile, a very unpredictable and increasingly deadly situation. Tom. As we saw in Ian's piece, you know, a sizable amount of the death toll and destruction is on the Gaza side. The residents of Gaza are stuck in the middle of this ongoing fight between the Israeli military and Hamas. What can you tell us about the worsening humanitarian situation there? Uh, I mean, it's hard to, to put in words, Tom. I mean, it really is unlike anything we've seen before. And when it comes to the context of Gaza, that's bad. This is a place which has now been involved in four successive wars with Israel. The last war back in 2014 lasted 50 days. I was there for about 35 of those days, and I can tell you, it was horrendous. It was awful. This time around, speaking to friends and colleagues inside uh, of Gaza now, they tell us even though this conflict has only been about eight days long, it's even worse. The devastation, the destruction is unlike anything they've seen before. Again, only eight days into this conflict. Uh, and many just feel that uh, there is no hope, that although there are sort of attempts to try to, to stop the violence, the violence is only continuing and the humanitarian crisis is only getting worse. We understand that Gaza's sole functioning uh, power plant only has one turbine left and only has enough fuel to last through this day, which means tonight, Gaza could be without power and Palestinians will be in the dark as those Israeli jets keep pounding that very densely populated strip of land. Now, there are growing calls for peace talks in Israel. However, a spokesperson for the Israeli Defense Force says that seems unlikely to happen for the time being. From an IDF point of view, as long as Hamas and Islamic Jihad are firing rockets at our civilians, which they are doing as we speak, and they did, unfortunately, with significant effect uh, just an hour and a half ago, uh, the topic of any de-escalation is obviously not uh, on the table. Uh, MTS, could we see more airstrikes conducted in Gaza despite Palestinian activists marching in the streets in protests of is Israel's recent bombing campaign? Yeah, I mean, I think we have to separate the two, right? You know, what's going on in the occupied West Bank and, and what's going on in East Jerusalem is part of what Palestinians would say is part of the broader struggle, right, against Israel's occupation of the, of the West Bank, uh, against Israel's presence in East Jerusalem, which Palestinians want as the capital of their state, which they, of course, do not have. Uh, but when we go back to Gaza and we look at those airstrikes and we look at these attempts at a ceasefire, you hear from that... Uh, I, IDF spokesperson saying that as long as rockets keep firing, being fired from Gaza, we're going to keep targeting uh, Gaza. It really makes you think maybe this isn't going to stop. But there's been a shift. There's been a change. Not only has the posture of the, the White House changed, as we were hearing Ed talking about earlier, uh, maybe not as strong as some people in the U.S. and indeed around the world would like to be, but this tone has shifted. We're also seeing a huge effort around the world. You have countries like Egypt, you have Gulf countries, you have Jordan, an ally of the U.S., all working very closely together with what they're calling intense diplomacy to try to get some 
kind of ceasefire in the Gaza Strip to stop those airstrikes and to stop Hamas's rockets. Now, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was just on Israeli television in the last half hour or so. He was talking, you know, pretty confident, saying that we struck a lot of sites in Gaza. And it sounds like, and I just want to say, sounds like, we could be near the end of this, that the goals uh, of, the, of the Israeli military and the Israeli government may have been met in this eight-day campaign. Whether that means the ceasefire is coming tomorrow or in the next 48 hours is anyone's guess. There's a lot of speculation here in Israel that that could happen. But until the rockets stop being fired from, out from, Palestine, from inside of Gaza, until Israel stops its airstrikes and its artillery shelling, this fighting is very much still on. Tom. Let's hope that that ceasefire uh, happens sooner than later. MTS Tayeb, thank you.